Are you wondering how to use felting tools? Then you're on the right video because in today's video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know and more. Welcome to today's video, how to use needle felting tools. My name is Iceland and on this channel, Snowflake Forest Felting, I share needle felting videos, needle felting tutorials, and have product reviews from time to time. So if this interests you, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel, be sure and check the links in the description below this video or leave me a comment. I'd love to connect with you there. This is video two in my needle felting beginner series. I'll be sure and link the playlist of these videos in the description below and the i card above so you can check the other videos out when you have a moment. So let's just jump right in and learn some more about these felting tools. So what you see right here is the very basics of what you need to be able to felt. I have the felting mat which protects your surface. I have your bone colored wool that you're going to use for the center of your piece. Your colored wool to give your creation the colors that you want it. Your felting needles, some scissors, and a tape measure so you can check on the sides if you're needing to confirm the size. If you want to expand out from the basics of this, I have some molds. You can even use a cookie cutter. The difference between these two scissors is I prefer the curved ones for trimming. These ones are straight, which work great too. There are different types of needles. I prefer these two, but I do tend to use my speed needles the most lately. But these ones work really good in getting my creation to come into form, so to say. And then I'll use more so the speed needles with adding the color on, but use this more for the shaping and molding. Again, not necessary. Any needle technically works. You can see here, a little creation that I've made recently. And then this stuff is extra too. This magic brush can be used to clean your felting surface so you don't mix fibers up when working them or you can have an extra mat that's like specifically used for certain colors. I tend to use this one for multi and then this one for the center pieces. So then that way you don't get like black or white fibers crossing your colors. Fishing line can be used to hang objects. You can see here I hung my jellyfish and my mermaid with them. Doll needles are great if you're going to be shoving them through like a ball creation like this. And you might even need some thread and needle if you're planning to sew anything onto them like beads as I did for my mermaid. Now to use your needles, you're simply going to pull them out of the case. Be super careful. They're super sharp and you can use your mat to stab them into partly why I like these foam ones. And you're going to take the loose wool that you want and you're going to begin to pierce it over and over and over and as you're piercing and puncturing the wool it's going to start to connect the fibers entangle them mesh them and as you're doing that you're going to be molding and directing the fibers to go the direction you want to create the object that you want wool is very forgiving you can always cut away if you don't like something and add wool to it again and then these scissors are also great when you finish with your project to just trim lightly around it and to get off any of the excess fibers to give it a very finished and complete look. This turtle I made and most newborn pops you find are about four inches in size. This turtle is actually about four and a half inches. So Clover USA makes these awesome molds if you're new and you don't think you're good at the shaping process. It'll begin to start helping you shape the stuff and then you will see in my next video I'm going to teach you how to make a star with this cookie cutter. You simply would put either one of these on your foam mat, start putting your wool in and piercing it over and over until it becomes a firm solid piece. The more solid it is the better it's going to hold up and look. Also be easier when you're adding on your final colors. I also wanted to be sure and point out in this video Go straight up and down as much as possible. Avoid going at an angle that's going to risk breaking your needle off into the project. And you don't want to do that. We will continue in our next video making this felted star. And most importantly, don't forget to put your felting needles away so no one gets hurt. They don't break because they are super fragile and then you can always have them. When you start to become a little more advanced with needle felting or you may want to pick up the speed with your process, there are needle felting pins and needle felting punches. The pin has three needles and the punches have five needles. The pin is really good for getting the center of your object nice and firm before adding on the color, whereas the punch is great for adding things like you see here, this mushroom onto this hat. 
And then this stuff is also great for making garlands or baby mobiles. And if you're interested in any of those videos, just be sure and check my Snowflake Forest felting playlist and it'll have everything there for you. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If there's something you want to see me create, please be sure and leave it in the comments below and I might just create it next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!